Well, as we await the fate of the Detroit three automakers and the potential of billions of dollars of government bailout, one man has taken his protest to the Canadian streets in an unusual way. Our own Scott Peterson has that story. I need $250 million to keep me going. It's not for me, it's for you. Please help me. Chris Moran's fed up. Like a lot of people, he gets up every morning to go to work. He's a sole owner of a promotions company and he's been struggling for the last six years to make a go out of it. Excuse me. But has anyone I'm stepped up to help him? Million no. To keep me going and he's angry about weeks. that. I'm just angry because I'm a, I'm a low income taxpayer and my hard earned tax dollars is going to support higher income taxpayers. And here's the source of his anger. The Washington bailout up to $700 billion now could extend to the car industry in Washington up to $125 billion over the next couple of years. Ontario and Canada, for that matter, could be on the hook for as much as 20% over the next couple of years. That equates to $25 billion in bailout. Do the math, it comes out to about $100,000 per employee in a low interest loan or bailout or whatever you want to call it. Well, I'm a one-person company. I would like a, a $100,000 low-interest loan, too. Moran's company, selling promotional yeah. products, like the automakers, okay, is going you. through tough times. But while the auto industry is securing a bailout, he has to hold down a part-time job just to make ends meet. One-third of the people are strongly against this. About one-third of the people are sitting on the fence and one third of the people are, well, yeah, I guess we should help them. What do you think the but there are some that support the bailout. They should bail them out because it's part of the country and the order, order that needs the money to survive. If they can't get it, well, they'll go to prison. So many thousands of millions of people will lose their jobs. So you'd be and against some further. against it. Where do you stop? The auto industry, the forestry industry, the mining industry, the construction industry. You could cut the list as long as young street. And it's still not going to alleviate the problem. You shouldn't be rewarded for, why should you get my money now when I didn't want to give it to you for making a bad car in the first place? And some thinking the government should move in a different direction. We need to do something for the workers, absolutely. But same old, same old, like Dalton McGinty gave them a whole lot of money. They built Camaros. That was craziness. A government could throw money into areas that would create new jobs and would push the audio, auto industry forward into something that's actually sustainable rather than just cars that use gasoline. Thank you. So does Chris Moran think he's going to get money out of the government? Just what's he up to? I'm not the type of person that would normally do this. I'm, I don't know the difference between a Republican or conservative or a liberal or anything, but it's just Nobody is standing up and offering the Ontario taxpayer the flip side of the coin. But in the meantime, he'll continue to bring his message to the street, telling people what's at stake any way he can. Scott Peterson, Business News Network, Toronto. Give him complete credit for being self-expressed and getting out there about what he believes. That's right. He's saying, what, is, what was he saying? $100,000 per job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you can construct scenarios anyway. We heard this warning this week. Oh, half a million jobs may go in Canada um, if the big three go down. Dennis DeRosier putting out a report this week saying that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because North Americans are going to go on buying 10 million more cars every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these cars have to be made by somebody. There'll be a big two if there's not a big three for the foreseeable future. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, why, why is he so confident they'll still continue buying? Well, who's going to... We, we, we love our cars. 80% of adults in North America have a car. But they have no credit to buy a car. How are you going to buy a car? Eventually, the economy will turn and people will start buying cars again. I mean, it's part of the lifestyle. You're saying 10 million is a big number, so I'm not sure if uh, I completely but, concur. But, my but sales have been running 15 million in the, in the United States. Okay, that was inflated, but, mm -hmm. you know, tens of millions of cars will be bought over the next decade. The Japanese and Koreans can't supply them all. All right, stay with us. When we come back on the close, uh, never mind about cars, who says that the VC money has all dried up? We're going to talk to a VC firm that has recently given millions to not just one Canadian company, but two. That's up next.
Hi. Hi, Jackie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Great, thanks for joining us. There's no doubt that, that Iceland is going to face a, a couple of years of, of hardship. Uh, this is a dramatic shock, I mean, uh, uh, an unprecedented shock. Uh, it, it's, it's probably going to be the most expensive bank restructuring that the world has ever